This is an almost live Winter Storm 96 weather update. This is John Keister with some updated closures due to the snowstorm. Como is closed. Cairo is two hours behind. No, excuse me, I mean two years behind. KSTW is operating on emergency schedule, as usual. KCPQ is two hours late. Channel 9 is $200 behind, but phone lines are open. Public access is on time. However, this is what they're showing. They're uh, Patrick and Ken about football. Channel 29. How Yo. you doing? Hello? Hi, Patrick. Patrick. You're, on, You're the on the air. Um, hello? Yeah. Hello. Am I on the air? You're on yeah. the air, partner. And Almost Live is locked, loaded, and ready to go. so happy it looks to me I look out here it looks to me like everyone made it through winter storm 96 <laughs> you saw our expanded coverage yesterday everybody woke up yesterday looked outside and went through the Seattle snow checklist question number one can I blow off work completely no, no, we knew pretty early that we couldn't do that. It just wasn't really sticking to the road, so that's that. But the next question always is, does anyone else at work live near me so that they'll bust me if I come to work late? You know, there's always... <laughs> I don't know where he is. The roads were fine. I don't know. I don't know. I came right in. They were dry, you know, so there's no one like that. You know, if you're sure there's no one like that, it's time for the Seattle Snow Day Long Breakfast. All right, all right. Yeah. A few extra muffins. Let's check out the TV. Hey, there's a Columbo I haven't seen on A&E. <laughs> I'm gonna take a bath instead of a shower. Roll into work about 11. Oh man, it was murder. No, it was murder in my neighborhood. No, my neighbor, my neighbor skidded out. I couldn't get out. No, everything was, oh yeah, no, it's, it's awful. I barely got in here, you know. Of course, then some other people call in and say there is no way they can get their car into the city during this storm. And then where do they drive? The mountains. Up to the mountains. It's like, <laughs> if you, check, yeah, that's uh, you right here. So you checked yesterday, all the ski areas were full. They were all packed. And people from the same office passing, you know, just passing. <laughs> well, that's good. It's great. So I'm glad we all, that was Winter Storm 96. <laughs> out there, reporters out there. Anyway, all right. Okay. Well, another interesting bit of news this week, you probably saw this, the Seattle city government is going to move into the Gateway Tower. Now, they were going to erect their own building, but realized the Gateway Tower was already erect. There it is right there. <laughs> already. Fulfilling Mayor Rice's, you know, dream to move to a higher office. He's up there now. Anyway. The move uh, also revealed an interesting thing about all those big skyscrapers downtown. They're empty. I mean, you probably all read that. The developers, they went nuts in the 80s and they built all those towers. There's nothing in them. So, I think this prompts an interesting question. Why is there a homeless problem in this city? Has anyone, <laughs> why, what, what, you know, put them on the 35th floor of the Columbia Tower. Just give them the whole floor, right? Seems logical, right? You know why they don't do that? They're afraid the homeless will start a law firm. That's what'll happen if they're up there. <laughs> Which I think would, that'd be good because then all the, you know, the hours that they're lying around, you know, incoherent on the sidewalk, those are billable hours. There's billable. 
And we could save, solve a lot of other problems with those buildings. Recycling, no problem. You know, one building for green bottles, one for clear, one for brown. <laughs> they should take that building with that, that dome up on top that's on like second and whatever. Fill it full of those little plastic balls like they have at Chuck E. Cheese or, you know. <laughs> Fill the whole thing with them, then throw all the kids in there. That's daycare for the whole city. The kids just <laughs> play in there all day. Gut out the 1201 building, and we have the world's largest indoor bungee jump, you know. <laughs> Although, actually, that would leave a lot more vacant space left, so I guess we could open up a new attraction. Bill Spidell's Above Ground Seattle, just walking through. <laughs> From out of the basements up into all the vacant office space, you know. Look out for the rats, you know. Just... No, that's not a rat, that's... No, I never know. Not gonna... <laughs> No, no libel. All right, anyway, all right. Uh, anyway, we did have inclement weather. That can be bad, but it gets everyone in the house around the TV set, which we love so much, and gives you a chance to look at all the wonderful new shows, one of which we're so proud to say is coming up on our network, NBC. Take a look. Coming to NBC Must See TV. <laughs> Get the ball, get the ball, fetch the ball. Bob Paternoster is a U.S. postal worker, dealing with life one day at a time on It's In The Mail. Katie, it's time to turn off the TV, go to bed. It's a school night, you know. have said that would be a little annoying. They wouldn't like that. I think the one is sitting right over here. Dear. Okay, Dad. Geez, you don't have to shoot out the TV. I'm going. It's the feel-good family show of the season. All right, class, settle down, settle down. Today's the day we begin demonstrating our projects in front of the class. So, uh, Katie, why don't you go first? All right. My science project is the common, everyday time bomb. Now, Katie, did you do this project entirely on your own, or did your father help you out? Well, he helped me out just a little. Well, how much help did he give you? He did the whole thing. That's what I figured. Young lady, you are just going to have to do another project. And this one you're going to have to do entirely on your own. Do you understand? Yes, Mr. Galloway. Honey, would you help me sort these clothes so that I can put them away? Sort? Oh, dear. <laughs> it's in the mail. Expect delivery within six to eight weeks on NBC. Stay with us. Well, you a great show, and we'll be right back. We didn't hurt the dog. The following is a paid advertisement for U.S. Bell Long Distance. Hi, I'm Dan Novak, and this is another edition of U.S. Bell Long Distance Talk. Now, today I want to introduce you to a great new offer. If you make a long-distance call from any U.S. Bell payphone in Western Washington, shown here in red, to any other phone in Western Washington, in the red, at any time of day, you can talk as long as you like, for just one dollar. It is that simple. Okay, now let's take some questions from our studio audience about our exciting new plan. Yes? Yeah, um, I live in Olympia, and let's say I want to call someone in Everett. How much would that be? Good question. That, <laughs> that would be a dollar. Yes? Yeah, um, my brother lives in Europe. Can I call him for just a dollar? No, I'm afraid you can't, but that brings up a good point. In explaining our new plan, I forgot to mention that Europe is not in Western Washington. <laughs> and I want to thank you for pointing out my omission on that matter. Next question, please. What if my call is real long? 
Excellent question. <laughs> and that gives me the chance to review a fact that maybe I glossed over a bit in my original explanation. A call can be as long as you like, and it's still only one dollar. What if I don't call? Will I still be charged a dollar? <laughs> I am so glad you had the courage to ask that question because I'm sure a lot of people in our audience were thinking the same thing, but they were just too embarrassed to ask. The answer is, if you don't call, you won't be charged. Yes, ma'am. This may sound like a stupid question, but what if I call from outside the red area, but then later drive into the red area? Will my call be prorated? That is not a stupid question at all. In fact, it's one of our most frequently asked questions. And I'm sorry to say that no, the offer is only valid, and let's take a look again here, if the call is made from the red area. And how will I know I'm in the red area? Will the ground be red? No. No, the, uh, the ground uh, won't be red. The ground will be uh, ground color. You know, it occurs to me that perhaps right now would be a real good time to review the specifics of our new long-distance calling plan because I'm afraid I may have made it seem more complicated than it really is. So here's the deal again now. Call from any U.S. Bell pay phone in Western Washington to any other phone in Western Washington at any time of day for any length of time, and it is only one buck. It's just that easy. Yes, sir. Now, I know you say the $1 rate is for any time of day. Does that include 5 o'clock? Yes. Indeed, it does include 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and so on. Thanks. Uh, well, then what about 10 o'clock? Yes, especially 10 o'clock. Next question. I don't have a lot of money. Can my calls be charged less than other people's calls? That's a good question. And I gotta tell you, uh, you raise an interesting point about the social inequities that are bound to exist in a capitalistic society and the responsibilities that a corporate monolith has in addressing those problems, but I'm still afraid you're gonna have to pay a dollar. That doesn't seem fair. Yeah, perhaps not, but we're still gonna do it. You know, you know your competitor Sprint says I can just pay what I can afford. You know, I hate to say this, but I believe you are mistaken. They have never had a policy like that at Sprint or any long distance carrier. Well, they do because my cousin Carl said he sent in 50 cents and they said that that was okay. I'm sorry, but I think you've been misinformed. Our new plan is the cheapest offer ever in Western Washington. No, it isn't. I'm terribly sorry to contradict you, but it is. Is not. Pardon me, it is. Is not. Is. Is not. Is. Is not. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> see, I'm sorry if I'm coming across as rude to a valued customer like you, but if you say one more word, I'm going to sashay over there and kick your ass so hard you'll be talking out of it on your next long distance phone call. Yes, sir, you had a question. <laughs> Come on right up with your question there. Uh, yeah. Excu excuse me, uh, before you ask the question, let me just say that the same goes for the next person who asked me a stupid question about our new calling plan. <laughs> okay? I'm sorry, now go ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, yes? I, I live in Auburn. Okay. And my fiance lives in Seattle. Uh -huh. <laughs> Never mind, I, I just figured it out. Great, great, that's great. I knew you would. And not a second too soon, because we're out of time on this edition of U.S. Bell Long Distance Talk. We'll see you next time. This is the late report. Well, Federal Way has raised its drunk driving limit from 0.08 to 0.10 to match the state levels. Now, this means.
that if you must drive through Federal Way, it'll now be a little less painful. <laughs> Boeing's negotiations to buy McDonnell Douglas have broken down because the two companies could not agree on a price or who would lead the company. In fact, the only thing they could agree on was that after the merger, they would fly over to France and pants everyone at Airbus. <laughs> <clears throat> TCI Cablevision says that they will be doing some FCC-required tests on their equipment that may cause a few outages in their service area. TCI says that they'll be doing these tests late at night, so it should not affect their normal daytime outages. <laughs> the City of Seattle has posted a no trespassing sign near the entrance of the City Hall building because of health problems caused by human urine and discarded hypodermic needles. A spokesperson for the city said that those city council members are just going to have to find another place to take their pee and heroin breaks. A Czech trading company uh, that saw an article on Fremont statue of Lenin is offering to sell Seattle a number of other bronze statues of other former USSR leaders. Fremont has offered to buy one of them and says that in the future the statue waiting for the interurban will be known as the waiting for the interurban with Stalin. <laughs> Washington State University Library has been given a huge collection of Beatles memorabilia, including albums, videotape performances, and posters. The donor explained the gift by saying that he was sitting at home listening to the Beatles, I'm a loser, and just naturally thought of Wazoo. <laughs> At a recent meeting in Mount Vernon, a Montana militia leader said that the government has modified 747s. So they can fly over an area, totally black it out, and then transmit whatever they want you to hear without you knowing it. Now, while there's no evidence that this has ever happened, we do have a clip from a newscast last night that does raise some questions. Do we have that? The government announced today that everything is okay and that all citizens are happy and satisfied with their lives. I know I'm satisfied. Aren't you, Dan? Yes, I sure am, everything Kathy. Very great. satisfied. In other news, everyone in the world has enough to eat. <laughs> mm. Mm. Makes you think, doesn't it? Well, last week, a shocked nation listened as several football players swore on national television, and this has caused some concern, and here with a comment is Bill Staten. Bill? Thanks, John. Okay. You know, there's been a lot of talk about these idiot football players swearing on national TV after their big game. Now, personally, I don't really care. I'm not offended by words like, words like this. I hear them all the time, often from John, sometimes from Nancy. Still, <laughs> a lot of people do find this kind of language offensive, and yet we are hearing it more and more. Why? Because somewhere along the way, we lost the idea of using substitute swear words. Now, in the old days, of course, this meant the basic four. Heck, shoot, dang, and fudge. <laughs> Unfortunately, these perfectly adequate substitutes have fallen out of usage in today's profane world. Heck left our vocabulary about the time the crazy world of Arthur Brown came out with their song, Fire. It just didn't have the impact if you sang it, I am the god of heck fire! <laughs> now you still hear shoot floating around a bit, but it's usually coming from people who look kind of Gomer Pyle-ish, you know? Now, the substitute swear word, dang, was often combined with the substitute deity, gall, to form gall dang it, now obsolete. And fudge as an expletive is pretty much only heard in nursing homes and in Ballard. So, I think there's a clear need for new substitute swear words, and, and I have a few suggestions here. One idea is to use expressions that mean the same thing, but communicate positive values. For example, if you're a Seahawk and you want to express disappointment over having lost yes, yet another football game, you could say, I can't believe we lost that loving and consensual act of intimacy between two mature adults football game. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Instead of just saying Courtney Love is a bitch, why not say Courtney Love is like a puppy, a warm, friendly female puppy who sometimes punches people? <laughs> see the difference? Of course, our own cultural environment can be a rich source of substitute swear words as well. For example, the next time an employee turns in a project that isn't up to par, try saying something like, Henderson, I'm not going to accept this work. It's a pile of shram. And <laughs> of course, if you're Henderson, if you're Henderson here, you can reply with, yeah, why don't you just shove it up your Aberdeen? <laughs> in my opinion, that's what we need. If you don't agree with me, fife you. Yeah. Thanks very much, Bill. Thank you. 
Very interesting. Finally, attorney Johnny Cochran was in Bellevue earlier this week for his speaking engagement, and while in the area, he also filmed a TV commercial for Nordstrom's where he said, and remember, if it doesn't fit, you must take it back for a full refund. This has been The Late Report. Don't go away or I'll, I'll fudge you up. Are you hungry? Yeah! How about a taco? Oh, yeah! At Big Billy's, we take a normal taco uh -huh. and double it. Ooh. Then add a chicken patty ah. and double it. All right! Then put it all in a fresh Kaiser roll with lettuce and tomato. Yes! But we don't stop there. Really? We fry it all up in a big cheese omelet. Then bake it up in the middle of our thick crust pizza. Then serve it up on top of a heaping bucket of our super hot chili. And top it off with our mile high pile of hot fudge and whipped cream. Now that's a meal. A super double chicken taco burger supreme fried omelet grand slam pizza super hot chili bucket sundae at Big Billy's, where the food is good and big. And for a limited time, buy one, get the second one free. <laughs>